It says I'm live. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope the sound and the video is good. Uh, I am on my own. Dennis is at the school right now, and it's okay. just me. Yeah. Uh, we're about to have a fantastic show about the casino career and your path to success and how to be uh, very successful pursuing a path in what I think is one of the greatest careers currently available uh, for cheap. You get in less than, hey, all right, good, fantastic. Oh, all right, so everything, uh, is everything going okay? So let me do a quick sound check for everybody. Let me know if you can hear me, uh, see me okay. And then we're gonna move right in uh, to the good stuff with without a delay. Well, there is a delay. There is a delay. I hear, I got Dennis on the phone, by the way, just helping me out. <clears throat> this is my first time kind of doing this on my own. He's at the CEG Dealer School. Uh, if we haven't met, if you don't know me and you're wondering why the hell I'm here, my name is uh, David Knoll. I have been in casino gaming uh, for the past uh, 33 years. I started in 1991 at the Golden Gate, downtown uh, Fremont. And since then, I've worked at 13 different casinos. Uh, most of them on the, let's say, lower tier, I struggled uh, quite a bit through my uh, earlier career to get, uh, you know, to find the right job, to get into the right career path. Uh, but ultimately, it uh, it has paid off. It took it took a little while, but here I am, uh, having this uh, fantastic chat. So I'm the co-owner of uh, CEG Dealer School here in Las Vegas. We we train and graduate and uh, place about a hundred dealers per month, give or take. Uh, we also, uh, I'm also the chief executive officer of Casino Quest at Fashion Show Mall, and uh, we teach people how to play. And along with that, we have uh, quite an interesting staff of people. We support, uh, we basically support gaming everywhere. So we work with a lot of casinos throughout the world, and I thought I would share the, the, the career path. What I feel is uh, the ultimate career path. I spend a lot of my time working with people no, I'm good. on a daily basis. Well, hold on a second. Let me... Let me mute Dennis really quick. Uh, hold on a second, buddy. I'm going to hang up with you, no? Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so I spend a, a, probably, I would say, a great deal of my time working with people uh, almost every day uh, and uh, developing a career path. Uh, people are motivated by different things, uh, and we have relationships kind of everywhere. So. Uh, people have different types of money. They come from different backgrounds. They have different skill sets. And so many people stop by or they email us, which, by the way, is info at CEG Dealer School. And you're always welcome to, to reach out to us. So, so I'm very happy to hear from you. Sometimes it might take us a minute. We get a lot of emails. But if you're someone in New Jersey and you have some questions about the school, about a potential career, uh, I'm happy. we're happy to get them. Uh, you'd be surprised. I answer most of the emails. Uh, I don't get to all of them, but most of the time it's me. Uh, I love uh, I love connecting with you. Uh, this has been a passion of mine for a very long time. I enjoy I enjoy Casino Quest. Uh, I enjoy the game parts of it, uh, but my real passion has always been uh, to help people you know, follow behind me and uh, be part of this experience. Uh, please forgive my voice. I'm a bit uh, out of sorts today, so uh, I've, been, I've been here at home working, uh, and my voice is, uh, is a bit rough. But, okay, uh, first off, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for everybody. It looks like a lot, of, uh, a lot of the regulars. This should be some great information. I know a lot of you have been following us. We have, we have quite a few people at the school who are already engaged in either becoming dealers or working on a career path themselves at different, at different levels. So it's always fantastic to see many of you who are coming from, you know, somewhere else. We just had a kid who, who was part of our station casinos program who came out, I think from South Carolina. Uh, and, and he, he found out about the, the free dealer school. Uh, he applied for that. He got accepted. He moved out here. Uh, we, we have some recent vets, uh, some, some army veterans. Uh, we have an army veteran, air force veteran who recently started with us and have gone on to, to become dealers. So I will start by saying, Right now is a fantastic time uh, to get into casino gaming, and for, for, for quite a few reasons. For one, uh, with all the talk about AI uh, and how AI is sort of you know taking over a lot of jobs, you know the great thing about being in a casino environment, at least, is you know it's a service-based environment. There's a lot of frontline types of jobs. 
that until they figure out the body that goes with the AI, the humans will be will be doing those jobs for a while. Uh, and so uh, I, I think it's pretty well insulated. Now, if you're an accountant uh, and some of the, you know, the back office things, uh, then maybe not so much. But even dealers, especially here in Vegas, are in high demand. Uh, you'll see electronic table games, of course, taking up some spots. But a lot of that is because there's not enough dealers. There's not enough actual crap dealers uh, in many cases. So you'll see these crap tables, uh, electronic tech, uh, crap tables being rolled out. Uh, but due to the lack of dealers, some of these games end up becoming part of the floor. Uh, and, and, and so there's that. All right. Uh, first, I got I to gotta do one other thing. We have fantastically gotten all these mats. So some of you have come to our, got to do a little, a little ad. We don't have an ad, our Varon, but, but this is our ad. Uh, so we have a, a website, it's called shopcasinoquest.com, and uh, we have spent quite literally the last six months evolving our, our desk mats. Uh, they're basically giant mouse pads. They're, they're, they're washable, uh, they're, they're, they're waterproof, and uh, they're fantastically high quality. We finally found a manufacturer. They finally all came in, and um, we're right now they're on sale on shopcasinoquest.com. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hope that I do this correctly, so bear with me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is i gotta, I got to move my screen. I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to show you this picture. Ah, there you go. Uh, so, so here is some of the mats. So some of these were designed by our very own dentist. Uh, like we have this bill mat. Can you see that? So on sale, 80 bucks. I hope you guys can see this. I'm assuming that you can see what I see, but they're, 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 they're just so very cool. Uh, they're, they're very durable, they're double stitch, uh, and, and they're really, they're really fantastic. So it's a giant mouse pad. Once you get them and you feel them, you know that it's a really, really high quality thing. Uh, and as far as the roulette, uh, so you guys that are into roulette, which there's, there's quite a few, or craps, if you're dealers, Dennis painstakingly set up every single square so that you can do complete bets with 39 millimeter chips. So if you're training and you want the most realistic type of mat, this, these are exact, like very, very exact to support all the chips you need to do an exact bet, uh, to, uh, yeah, to do a complete bet. So, all right, there's that. All right, back to the program. Okay. Oh, look, now you guys get to see our OBS. Uh, all right, here we go. Bam. All right, there we go. See, I think I did that. Did I do that? Did I do that right? Uh, I don't know. I, I think so. Uh, okay, back to the thing. All right, good. I mean, can, I, can everybody tell me if I did that right? I think I did that right. I think I did that right. All right. Uh, so, so here's the thing. I'm going to break this down into a few different categories. And first, and I'm going to answer your questions as I go uh, because it's just me. Uh, then Dennis won't be here until a little bit later. He's, he's we're closing the school. Uh, so, so first I want to be like, you know, why do you want a career in gaming? And then I'm going to get to kind of, I'm going to break down like the, not just being a dealer, by the way. So I've had the episode where I talk about, you know, what's, what are paths to be a dealer? This is really about a career in gaming. So, you know, dealing is a component of that. It's very helpful to be a table game dealer, but we're going to get, we're going to do the big arc. Uh, we're going to talk about that. I did do it. Okay. Look at you, buddy. That's pretty, you know, so I'm, you know, this is new. So this is new for me. That's fantastic. All right, good. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So, so first of all, why, uh, why do we want to see a, a career in gaming? And, and this is like going to be, I hopefully for many of you out there, you're going to be seeing this months ahead. You're going to search in Google or YouTube and you're interested in a career and hopefully you come across this and uh, hopefully this is, you know, kind of the information that you need. I, I've been doing this a very, very long time. I have I've been in casino gaming for a very long time. I've worked at every level of uh, of casino gaming, and I have let's just say sweat out most of those years, where I wouldn't say bottom of the barrel, but but sort of. Uh, so when I started in gaming, I didn't have a whole lot of money. I had terrible credit. Uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me specifically. There weren't a lot of colleges. There weren't a lot of uh, th there wasn't a lot of career support. It was a very much of a grunty sort of existence. You know, you 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 worked your way in, you, you broke in. It was most mostly, you know, if you could physically get on a table and then you evolved. So if, if you look at a lot of people that are in gaming now, uh, especially people that are shift bosses, that are supervisors in, in some capacity, many of them started out as valets, table game dealers, I mean, porters in many different other areas of the casino and they just learned things and they moved on. The most fantastic thing today is corporations are now a big part of the casino gaming uh, career. 
Uh, and, and because of that, there are now colleges and university and trade schools like ours that really can provide a jump start uh, to having a career. But I do believe that you now have this great opportunity to plan, to plan a path, to literally sit down and figure out, you know, what's the goal? And, and you can change the goal. You can move the needle. You can change the goal. You might find yourself in a position that you like more. Maybe you don't want, you know, to be an executive. Maybe decide to be a dealer. Maybe decide other paths. But there's lots of opportunities and there's lots of support. Uh, yeah, there's lots of support for you if you're interested in, in being uh, involved in gaming. So first of all, why gaming? So casinos are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're all over the world. You can go anywhere you want. You can end up on a cruise ship. You could be in Europe. You can be South America, North America. I mean, literally everywhere in the world. It's open. The casinos are a tax, uh, a, 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 a state, a tax base is, you know, best friend. So people love casinos because they come with money. Uh, you know, casinos show up. A lot of times you'll have new manufacturing or new businesses will come in and they, they're incentivized. The state gives them an incentive. The government gives them an incentive to say, hey, come on down. You know, if, if, if you open up in our, on our state, uh, you know, we'll give you some tax breaks. Casinos, they, they, they pay. They show up and they pay, right? So there's all this uh, motivation for the most part. Uh, to have casinos. So casinos are expanding everywhere. I honestly believe eventually casinos will open Texas, uh, maybe Hawaii. Hawaii could be a tough bridge, but everywhere. I don't see I don't see why not. There's also online gaming. There's the Bitcoin, the crypto casinos. I mean, there's lots of opportunities so literally everywhere all over the place. If you go to the Labor of Bureau Statistics, casino gaming is expanding by about 7%, 6 to 7% a year, which is great. Uh, so it, it, it's still a growth career. Those of you trying to be lawyers, maybe not so much, dude. AI is taking over. I mean, you hear about, uh, you know, the pivot in a lot of industries and, and how industries are being squeezed, even retail. You know, you would think the guy checking you out that that job would be pretty well insulated, but not so much, right? They're finding ways to, to move people out of industry and move computers in. With gaming, that's not necessarily true. Uh, so, so lots of opportunity. The other thing with casino gaming is, is it's above average pay. So here in town, here in Vegas specifically, casinos pay pay pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of jobs you make north of $100,000 a year, uh, quite a few that are north of $60,000. And that's lots of areas throughout the casino space. So in many different areas, even housekeepers can make a great living uh, and have a career path. So there, there's a lot of entry points within the casino gaming that not only provide a better wage, but also uh, better benefits. And that's the other thing. Of, as, as far as the industries go, on an industry average, casinos offer some of the best benefits that you can find anywhere. The only place I know of that has better benefits is like banking industries or sort of high level banking industries. Uh, just as a general rule, there are some unions, of course, too, that, that have some great benefits, but casinos offer great benefits. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of a staple of the business. And that's how they keep you going. How many, how many jobs have you had where you, you can eat? Almost every casino in town has an employee dining room here in Las Vegas where they feed you. You know, you show up, you eat, you enjoy, uh, and you go home. Okay. The, the rest of it is, you know, long-term potential. There's, there's lots of movement inside of the casino space. So casino is like a living, breathing city. So besides the table games, you have the cashier area, you have slots, slot hosts, a lot of tech departments. And there's a lot of, you know, back of the house areas. You could be an accountant, you can be a lawyer, you could be a manager, you could be logistics, you could be an actuary. There are so many areas all throughout the casino space that need people uh, and, and are well monetized with lots of career opportunities. So those of you looking for, you know, you, you become a table. I know many people who have come in as a table game dealer and uh, wanted to be an accountant, ended up being maybe a controller uh, for the casino or maybe an auditor for the casino, whatever the case is. There's just so many different roles to play inside of the casino. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know, 100,000 a year. Okay. Uh, I'm not to avoid looking at the chats for a second, but anyways, lots of different, uh, lots of different career paths that you could take inside the casino. And um, I believe very AI resistant. So I know that uh, me personally, you know, I've been paying attention. I, I don't think it's impacting me directly, but I know that for many people out there, especially if you're going to college right now, there's this idea that the AI may come for you at some point or there, you know, may minimize, you know, what your opportunity is. But in casino gaming, for the most part, it's pretty well insulated. There are a lot of jobs, I'm sure, that'll go that path just like everywhere else. 
Uh, but the great thing about casino gaming, it's a very sort of frontline heavy experience. So there's lots of opportunity where, where people really want to work with other people. All right. Um, all right. A, uh, yeah, 100,000 a year. Here in Vegas, by the way, 100,000 is great money. Uh, and that's being a dealer. It's fantastic. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I hate craps at Indian casinos. Yeah, I'm not sure it's actually craps. Is it? Is it real craps? I'm not really sure. Indian casinos. Okay. Uh, and fantastic. We got uh, Coin Pusher coming out here uh, in 10 days, and we'll see you then, buddy. All right. Uh, you ready? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on. All right. So so the basic path to casino gaming there there's three. Uh, there's three basic paths. One of them is to actually go to college. You'd be amazed at how many universities support the hospitality industry, which this is. So there's a lot of ways to enter through a university. Go to school, find a program here in town, UNLV. Uh, offers a program. Uh, we, we have state colleges that offer hospitality programs. So there's a lot of ways, a lot of entry points to learn and sort of get acclimated and get some basic understanding of the, the career path. The other way is to go to a trade school like ours. So we're a trade school. We teach people how to deal and de dealing, uh, working as a casino dealer is a fantastic entry point if you're looking at casino gaming because it helps you understand the money and the people and how everything flows. And lots of executives at all levels of casino, many of them here in Vegas especially, started out as dealers. Well, you know, being a dealer is a very visceral way to get very connected to what goes on on a casino floor and what moves the money. And it gives you an understanding of how people interact with the games, the games themselves, the priorities that they have with customer service. So it's a it's a fantastic way uh, to enter. So with a trade skill like our, a trade school like ours, you get the skills to transfer directly. And then your experience then is really a hands-on type of uh, type of practical acclimation to, uh, to casino gaming. The other way, uh, not the friendliest way, by the way, is a lot of casinos offer their own paths. Uh, and by, by, by that, I mean, like if you work in an area, or if you live in an area where it is Indian uh, reservation, Indian, uh, Indian casino, this type of thing, they will train you to work for their property, which is great. Another great entry point. I know many people have found a lot of success, uh, you know, being trained, uh, but prepare for that training to be very specific and very linear. They're training you for their program very specifically. And, you know, I, the, the takeaway for me is always not, not always, you, you don't always have all the options available to you, right? You're working for one employer. They're kind of dictating your reality. You learn the skills that work for them, but may not work for, you know, other casinos, so, so I feel like it's a, it's a less impactful path. Unless you're planning on doing, you know, 18 years later. I know a guy that, that works at casino, in Indian casino, and, um, you know, he learned from the bottom up. They trained him, and 18 years later, he's now the chief executive officer of that casino. So a fantastic path for him. Uh, but when it comes to dealing, especially when you, when you are trained on the floor of a casino, when they train you, they're training you for them, you know, and sometimes those skills don't necessarily transfer. So going to starting at a college, university or at school like ours, you know, we train you for all the opportunity. You know what I mean? We give you sort of a broader picture. Not to say that if you don't, if you do start uh, like, you know, for for a casino and you train with them, I would recommend highly that you expand your horizons at some point when you can come to a trade school, go to a college, uh, you know, give yourself sort of a wider view. Yeah, by the way. The, the interesting, someone brought up, Ryan Smith said, I saw a school in Gulfport, $5,000 for three games. I know what school that is. Uh, and uh, it, it's Crescent. It's Crescent School of Dealing. I might as well just tell you that because you can look it up. That's who's there. Uh, it's absurd. Uh, so a lot of some schools out there, especially trade schools, they have, they will try to tell you that, um, you know, the, the fact that they're an accredited school somehow gives you an edge as a trade school. Uh, let's just say it's BS. Uh, it means absolutely nothing. Uh, so casinos don't care about the school or the certificate. They, they do the school maybe a little bit, but what they want you to do is show up and pass. You have to demonstrate skills, knowledge, uh, and you know some level of expertise, ability as a personality, that kind of thing. The rest of it's nonsense. So if you're ever sitting there and someone's telling you uh, that we're an accredited school and somehow that matters. It doesn't matter. Now, if you go to university, you go to UNLV in a college, absolutely 100%, right? Because they're giving you sort of this broad look, right? They're training you in many aspects. You know, you have like an English course attached to it. It's not just gaming. Uh, so just know. But if you go to a trade school and they sell you on $5,000, tell them to take a hike. That's not a thing. 
I, 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 I fail to understand uh, how, you know, how well, they get away with it because they're the only they're the only player in town here in Vegas. We have a lot of competition. So so all the schools are cannibalized. Right. We started two hundred and fifty dollars for a course uh, when, um, you know, everywhere else you go to L.A., it's a thousand dollars a course, which is probably closer to what it should be. But uh, once you get to 10,000 or 5,000, that's just silly. So there's no truth in that. Do some research uh, and, uh, or email us. And with that said, by the way, uh, I want to make you guys aware uh, that we have had some people who have tried to take advantage of our community. Um, if you ever have a question about anything in Vegas, you're part of our community. Uh, so the, our email is info at cegdealerschool.com. Absolutely, 100% emails. Just ask us. Say, hey, this person offered me this. Is it true? And, and if you're planning on spending a thousand, two thousand, three, whatever the case is, just talk to us. We're, we're happy to give you. Uh, we're happy to give you the truth, even if we don't like the truth. It'll be the truth, uh, and we might be able to save you some agony uh, and some of that. But someone in our community took advantage of an of someone else in our community. Uh, and, and fed him a line of BS. So, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Again, we, we don't get every email, but we try to. We're happy to answer. Um, I've had many people, you know, talk about the career paths or send emails over, and I, and I really enjoy uh, giving you feedback uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, as, as much as I can. So, so just know that's a thing. Um, okay, so there's a lot of ways forward, uh, and what I suggest is you plan your path. Uh, there's lots of ways, uh, you know, that we talked about the three ways to enter, but there's lots of ways to end. You know, what's the destination? What are you looking to do? Uh, do you want to be a dealer? Do you want to be a supervisor? Do you want to one day run or manage a casino? There's a lot of ways to go about this. I will say this, the easiest path, at least initially, is to become a dealer. Uh, and, and again, a dealer is a very sort of hands-on way to learn the casino. Uh, and it sets you up for to look out and see what other opportunities might be available to make a few friends and network a little bit and give you some more insight on, you know, this future, this, this potential you know, casino career that you might have. The other thing to do is, um, you know, come talk to me as we talk and we can kind of work out the, uh, the career path or go to a university, get the big picture view. Uh, and, and kind of settle into, you know, what it is you're trying to look for. I know a lot of people go into it thinking that, you know, one day they could open a casino, be a casino manager, this type of thing. But it takes some understanding. Uh, it obviously takes some time. And, and quite now, and now it takes, uh, you know, a very sort of a literal translation of skills. Like you have to have certain skill sets to get there. Uh, it's, uh, there's not as many casino managers as our dealers, right? A lot more dealers, a lot more demand for dealers, uh, table game directors, floor supervisors, less of those. Uh, so understanding sort of what those opportunities are uh, is good to know in advance. All right. Um, okay, here we go. All right, Illinois, Indiana casinos are paying people to go to dealer school. Yes, they should be. There's a shortage of dealers. Station Casinos, by the way, is working with our school uh, and is offering a free dealer school program. So if you go to Station Casinos and you go up to the, you go to their career path uh, on their website, and you type in a dealer trainee, that opportunity will come up and you can apply. Uh, just know though that that is specifically for that, you know, that path, that career path of Station Casinos. If you want a more flexible or open path, you know, then you, you just come to the school and you sign up. So just know that if you go through the Station Casino, and it, by the way, it's a fantastic program. Uh, we have been advocating for this for many years. We work with Station over the years just to set this up and create this opportunity. And we've always felt that it's the casinos that need these dealers. Uh, so let's lower the barrier and, and you know, let's move more people over, you know, to transition. Whatever you're doing, uh, if, if you're, you know, come on down. So go to uh, Station Casinos. Uh, I, I don't know what the whole link is. Maybe, um, is Dennis still there? No, is Dennis still there? He could probably put the link up. But anyways, uh, okay. So now we're going to uh, we're going to plan the path. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about the path a little bit and give you kind of the distinctions between the path. Um, for some of our, our our current population, maybe this isn't for you, but I'm hoping that this stays up and uh, we make this available to a lot of people who who may be considering a path forward to consider gaming. All right. So if you go to college or your university and you go into a hospitality path, UNLV, by the way, has one of the most well respected hospitality career paths. That includes casino gaming, so it's not just hospitality; it also includes uh, casino gaming. And it, it, uh, Bo Bernard has been sort of the spearhead. He is, he is a guy who one day I would absolutely love to meet. 
Uh, but he is, I wouldn't say wholly responsible, partly responsible, making UNLV quite literally a destination for casino executives or, or for you to become a casino executive and go through this program. And it's an absolutely fantastic program. In fact, this program offers real mentorships uh, based on the relationships that UNLV has with casinos. And some of them are incredibly formative. So not only do you go to college and you kind of learn the big picture, you also are able to get into a casino. And some of these casinos will put you up, uh, pay for you to stay there, uh, pay you for the intern. In fact, one of the interns that came up with Stacia Casinos, you actually lived at the Stacia Casino and it was a fantastically paying job. It wasn't like your typical you know, intern where you volunteered your services. I mean, you really got paid real wages. Uh, it was fantastic. So UNLV has, uh, what I believe is, is arguably one of the best programs for you you know, uh, starting a career path in gaming and giving yourself a bird's eye view of sort of all the options. And then again, you know, hitting the floor running and working, uh, you know, working on the floor, living there and being part of the experience. I've, I've known a few people that have been on that path and it's literally jumpstarted their career in quite a few ways. I, I know one of them became an executive casino host. Another's already a, a, a floor supervisor on their way to be probably a shift boss here soon. So Lots of really good ways to kind of jumpstart your career. Um, the other one, of course, is uh, b besides going to university, is like I talked to you, is going to a trade school like ours and becoming a dealer. It's a little longer path. Uh, so, so being a dealer is a fantastic path. It's a great way to get in the door, make some money, get some benefits, and sort of start networking and be part of the community. So it, it's a much more, I would say, you know, visceral way. Uh, so, so the way, the way, the reason I enjoy the 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 deal. I mean, besides owning a dealer school, of course, uh, and you paying me to teach you uh, or our school, uh, is that you get to meet people. You, you're able to create a network of people uh, that are also sort of on the same path as you. And many of these people uh, will move up. You'd be amazed at how many people I started with who are now running casinos or being ship bosses. And these are all part of this sort of expanding network you create. Uh, and, and you're not going it alone. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. If you were to come to our school, you'd see this very interesting dynamic of people, uh, people getting married. I mean, people meeting their, their, you know, their, you know, having girlfriends and boyfriends and friendships and the whole thing. It's quite interesting. Uh, I've always said that if you're really bored at your house, just come and become a dealer. You'll make a ton of friends and that could be the benefit all on its own. Um, but anyway, so there's, there's, there's being the dealer. All right. The other areas are sort of on the job training. So by that, I mean the, the casinos are always hiring entry level positions that don't require any real expertise. You don't have to go to a trade school. They train you. And, and those areas are typically slots, the front desk, a hotel front desk, and a lot of different entry points. So they're always looking for valets. They're always looking for housekeeping. There, there's lots of ways to sort of just get in the door. And the great thing about doing that in many ways is because now there's corporations involved many times they have they will actually pay you or incentivize you to go to school and add to your skill set those casinos are highly motivated if they like you to keep you expand your knowledge and help you move forward inside the casino uh station by the way and, I, and i'm referred I'm a, I'm a huge fan of station casinos for, for quite a few reasons i've worked for them myself over the years uh, and, and they're, they have been a great uh, community partner. Uh, the benefits that they provide, you know, they, they went out of their way to provide like daycare. They provide daycare at their casinos, which kind of makes sense, right? I mean, that, that's kind of a self-motivating thing. Uh, but, but they offer reimbursements for going to school. They, they even offer, you know, have discounts for getting phones and things like this. So going and getting into a station casino is a great way uh, to transition. So right now, in fact, if you're a station casino employee, you can talk to your supervisor and they will help you. If you're back of the house, they will help you train you to be front of the house. To, to If you're working as a housekeeper, if you're working as a chef. Recently, we had one of their chefs uh, you know, the, inside of a station casino at, at sort of a high-end restaurant, actually, you know, move on to become, want to become a dealer. And, and they paid for him to come to the school. And now he's a casino dealer and he's loving life. So, you know, look for that kind of relationship. Not all casinos offer that. Uh, you, you definitely want to do your research. So don't get stuck and end up at a property where it's kind of a dead end. Um, you know, that's one of those things where you can email me. You know, there's not just like in any any industry, there, there's some bad actors and some better actors. So, you know, kind of figuring out which is which. Uh, luckily for you, you got me.
So I'm happy to help you, give you the bad eye. I'm always 100% honest, I can care less. Luckily, I'm a little distance, so uh, I can be somewhat neutral and honest. Um, but yeah, okay. What do I have? Do I have any, uh, I have any questions? I got a question. Can you help guys help with housing? Well, we would love to one of these days, but right now, not so much. In fact, we don't even, we don't really recommend housing. I will tell you, if you come to Vegas and you're part of our program, go to rent. Rents are actually starting to come down and rent shares are coming down. So if you're coming to Vegas, there's, there's lots of Airbnbs, lots of rentals you can take advantage of. You go on, but go on to one of the services like rental.com or rent.com, whatever the case is, uh, and make sure you don't get you know screwed over. Uh, but we, we don't recommend necessarily where to go. Uh, Vegas is kind of a hodgepodge of, of different neighborhoods, some neighborhoods better than others. And we don't want to get in a position where we told you to go here and something happened. Now it's our fault, that kind of thing. I will say as a general rule of thumb, stay to the West. The West is always better. There are parts of the East that are great too, but it kind of depends. It's much more of a patchwork. Um, and there's that. So the other, here's, here's Steve-O. I want to be a bartender, one of the big pulls in Vegas. Bartender is a tough, uh, you know, as, as far as that goes, uh, there, there are jobs out there, but there's, there's a lot of extra bartenders. Uh, so sometimes that as an opportunity can be a little tough. I really, I, I can help get you connected to casinos, uh, and uh, but but you have to find the position. Uh, and, then, um, and then from there, if they have a position, then we can kind of work from there. Um, but there's that. All right. Uh, okay, where are the high limit, good high limit roulette games? Uh, that's really up to you, man. I, uh, what what to play? Uh, I would say uh, the Plaza has, a, you know, if you want the SR on the floor, I think it's still twenty five bucks. Uh, but apart from that, if you have a ton of money, you know, go to Cosmo, uh, hit up Caesar's Palace. Uh, I, I always go for the jugular, dude. If, if I if I was actually rich, and and I was looking to play roulette, which I which I wouldn't be to be honest with you, but. Uh, I would play somewhere where they had the best steakhouses and the best rooms. And because once I lose on roulette, I want some free stuff. There's all that there is. So that's, I always look uh, to kind of have that experience and go where I can get the best hosts and the best perks. Okay. All right. All right. Now we're going to talk about uh, kind of the career itself. Uh, and then we're going to shoot. So assuming you have started at the career, uh, you are at the, you're at a casino. Here's what I will say. Try to go into a role. Do not put a suit on. Try to be a member of staff. You need to learn uh, the business. Uh, I would recommend, even if you're offered a suit, do not put on a suit. You, you, having skills and understanding how a casino floor works, whatever, whatever area of the business that you're in, working as a regular staff member is a, very, uh, is a great way to gain real knowledge, real expertise, real context that will help you move up and evolve. I know a lot of people who are offered uh, like supervisor roles at low end properties because they, they don't have anybody to fill that staff. Uh, so if you happen to be older and you come from somewhere else, maybe you manage, you know, a pizzeria or something like this. They'll say, hey, you are some kind of team leader. Here's a suit. And now you're stuck. Uh, so a lot of times these suits don't transfer. This doesn't give you a lot of career uh, you know, mobility, a lot of career flexibility that just doesn't transfer. So I will say when you, when you go in and you start your career in gaming, definitely apply yourself at the bottom if possible. It doesn't have to be completely at the bottom, but at the bottom, gain the skills, gain the knowledge, you know, you know, meet people, create that network for yourself. Uh, snapper, how you doing, buddy? All right, good. Uh, yeah, by the way, there we go. All right. So a little interjection, uh, lots of IT opportunities in Vegas, and we have a really great, uh, we have someone that we've been working with that does, uh, that's hiring break-in surveillance people. Uh, if you have any background in surveillance, uh, there's a few places out there now that are really looking desperately uh, for people to get on the joystick. So if, if you're a voyeur and you like hitting that joystick and watching what goes on in the casino floor, there's, there's quite a few casinos now that will are very interested in, in you know, moving people up. You know, I will say it can be very boring up there uh, on the joystick. Uh, so, you know, be prepared. There's quite a few people who I've started at various levels uh, of surveillance. And, you know, for what, it's not for everybody. Uh, it, there's there's not a lot of excitement in surveillance to start, just so you know. It's, it's one of those things that, that kind of evolves. Uh, but, but at first, you're on the joystick. You got to stay awake. You got a lot of stuff to cover. You do all the report. Now, eventually, it leads to being an investigator, getting on the floor, being undercover, and there, there's some you know more exciting elements to it, but that takes a minute. 
Uh, but if you're someone who just likes to sit up there and hang out and, and do that, that, there's definitely that. I, I will recommend, though, if you're interested in surveillance, you got to come to the school. you got to learn all the games because they're going to have you watching the games. That's definitely uh, one of those opportunities. All right. Okay, that's a great question about moving, dealers moving. I, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get to that in one second. All right, so I'm going to move to the next part, and then I'm going to answer some questions, and we'll talk about um, the rest of the path, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so you're in the door. You started at a casino, uh, and, and you're looking to progress. So I'll tell you again, don't take a suit. Don't put a suit on. Learn the business. Learn it formatively. If you can, it's sometimes helpful to learn it from more than one casino. So having more than one casino on your resume is great. Now is not the time to, to jump casinos too frequently. So back in my day, every six months to a year, again, I worked 13 different casinos, uh, well, 12 different casinos, but then one of those was twice. So uh, that, that's, that's not as popular today, let's just say. That some casinos are looking for uh, some, more loyal, uh, some more loyalty, some more durability uh, when it comes to employees. So if you're just jumping around constantly, you know, they may look at that negatively. So let's try to stay one place for maybe a year, six months. We always recommend that dealers stay at least six months before they move on to the next job. Uh, you know, but there's that. Um, hold on a second. I want to have, okay, a kiosk in Boston. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to those in a minute, uh, but uh, here, all right. Um, okay. So uh, you're, you're at the casino floor, you're looking to, uh, to advance. So here's a few ways to, to really uh, jumpstart your career you know, from start. So once you have some kind of formative uh, beginning, okay, wherever you start in the casino, look for casinos that are either opening uh, near you or look for a casino that's out of state. So if you're starting in Vegas, especially really, I, I guess probably wherever you start, try to get out of state if you can. That was very helpful for me. Uh, or you will look to opening a new casino. So opening a new casino is is viewed very highly uh, as uh, as quite the you know upgrade to your resume. Uh, so if you've played a role in opening casinos, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a very sort of formative thing to be part of. Uh, if you're on the casino floor, you've been a casino manager, or any of those things, opening new casino is a path to the next level. Uh, and playing a role in you know, sort of the development of the floor, development of the hotel. Uh, understanding what priorities and, and you know, the state legislature, what kind of rules, what kind of all the regulations, everything else that play a role is, is very formative. And you'll learn things that you won't learn on a casino uh, that's currently in operation. Right. So it's this whole new whole new book of learning that you can that you can be part of. So back in the day when I opened, I opened Louisiana, I went to players. I went to Bella Baton Rouge. Uh, and both of those casinos were very formative in helping me understand how a casino works uh, and, and giving me more opportunities as I came back to Vegas. Uh, in fact, uh, I wasn't a supervisor until I left. Uh, and then I, I, I was able to put a suit on, um, you know, and then coming back to, to Las Vegas, I was offered lots of different promotions based on my experience opening. Uh, and, and having played uh, a, a bigger role. And in many cases, by the way, if, if you come from Vegas uh, and you're looking to go out of state, you know, they see Vegas as a, a very uh, preferred uh, background, right? So that, 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 that plays out true if you're a dealer, if you're a supervisor, whatever the case is. Uh, so, you know, coming from Vegas and having Vegas experience uh, is very helpful in, in other markets. So, um, but there you go. So for those of you that are starting on gaming, I recommend coming to Vegas. Atlantic City too, by the way. Atlantic City, uh, Biloxi, um, I think uh, here in Vegas. I mean, th th those are the three big hubs um, that you can work on. Okay. Um, so get out of town or open open a new casino. The other thing, of course, is uh, creating formative relationship. Wherever you go, wherever you start, uh, you know, create a network, start a network of people, start a network of friends. It's amazing to see how well some of these people will do. Maybe they'll jumpstart and get ahead of it. In the end, many of these people, uh, like even now there's casinos that are opening up and of course they're putting together management teams made up of people they know and trust. Uh, and so there's a lot of that. In the, in the olden days, it was for as a good old boys club. It's not that anymore. Uh, so a lot of people that come into business together, they get to know each other. Maybe they go their separate path, but ultimately, you know, you have these big casinos coming up or new casinos coming up, and then they reach out to people that they know and they can trust, uh, and they, they understand their background and what skills they bring to the casino floor. And that could be, uh, you know, 
quite the thing for you. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and and answer some of these questions, and uh, we'll go from there. How's everybody doing? I'm I'm on my own, dude. Uh, I got nothing to back me up. Here. Okay. So here we we uh, one of the questions was uh, from Clint uh, about uh, I think oh no God. It seems like dealers move from one casino to another, including you and Alex. Why is that? Follow the money. Uh, so a lot of new properties open up, uh, casinos open up, uh, or you know some casino does thing uh, does something differently, and so you know the money goes up wherever you're working. The money goes down. You know what's interesting? It's I always tell people you follow the manager. You know you you really do. The, the manager has so much of a role in, in how that casino executes and how that casino performs. So those of you that know us, and I'm I'm gonna say this, uh, which I hope I hope everybody um, you know understands. So we we have a friend of ours who is like a game changing boss, I believe, and uh, I I can't even express this. This is probably a very good explanation, and I hope I don't know if he's listening. I don't know if he's out there, but so so his name is Brian, uh, and and I met him. So Alex knew him many years ago. Uh, I met him many years ago, you know, with the school, and and I met him when he was. Uh, table games director at the Sahara uh, and it was amazing because if you went into the Sahara back then you saw how how relevant this person was in creating this space uh, creating this environment creating this opportunity and Cosmo I mean he, he was so formative as a boss that the Cosmo came calling the Cosmo literally headhunted seven dealers off his floor seven dealers which is unbelievable uh, I mean, you know, so this is Cosmo right now is is one of the top places to, to deal. There's Cosmo, Aria, Blasio. There's a few of them. But can you imagine Sahara is not viewed like if I'm at the Cosmo and I'm looking for dealers, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to Aria or Blasio. No, no. They came to Brian's floor because how he runs that floor, quite literally. And when you went in there, you saw all the activity. Like, I, I mean, if you went in there when he was the boss to when you if you go in there now and I know there's a lot of dealers who, who absolutely agree with me. They made more money. They literally made more money. I mean, maybe a lot more money. When he was there, they made more money. Cosmo came calling and hired the dealers. If you're starting in the business, in this business, follow the boss. The boss is there. Then Brian goes to the Strat. So those of you who have followed us, he was at the Strat. So he was running the Strat there. And uh, you were going to the Strat, packed, absolutely packed. That place was absolutely filled up. He created this whole new experience, upgrade. I, I, never in my life would I have thought, I have been in this town for 33 years. The Strat was, you know, second rate. I mean, it's, you know, second rate property. Uh, you know, it, 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 legendary. So I used to play that when it was Vegas World. There was no reason to go in there. There was no reason to deal. No reason. Now, all of a sudden, Brian gets there. They revamp it. They brighten it up. They move the casino. But he had a role in all of that. And, and within a year of, of, you know, in his tenure, it becomes a great job. I mean, and, and, and again, if you talk to any dealer that was there, when Brian was there, the money was good, the play was good, the high limit pit was filled. I mean, it was a formative experience. And many of those dealers moved on to uh, a lot of better jobs. It, it's quite stunning, by the way. It really is. Uh, now, he's moved on to a, another casino. And again, same thing. I mean, there's another ball. There's a few of them like that. There, there are a few of these people that it's not so much that they move the needle, uh, and and they're not creating like you know they're not going in and and creating this whole other thing, but 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 they understand uh, the people that gamble. They understand how the floor moves, how the money moves. They understand those sort of the, they understand the utility of the the gaming environment, and they're able to affect change. Then you know there are bosses right now, and if you're a dealer out there right now, you know uh, you might be making less money because you know the boss came in. There, there was a famous boss we used to call him the casino killer. I don't want to out him right now, but he played a role and he would kill casino after casino after casino because he, every time he would come on the floor, he was looking at ways to eliminate or or distill the, the, the dealer experience. So so any way they can keep more money in play from the player and eliminate how dealers got topes. That was one of his big overhauls. You know, he saw this as, you know, if you're a player and you come up to a table and you tip the dealers, uh, that money's gone. That money is in the tote box. Casino can't win it, goes to the dealer. But 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 now you got a happy dealer, right? The happy dealer, dealer's helping you. Now imagine you're a boss and you see that as an opportunity 
to win more money. What I mean, of course, the morale is going to go down. A lot of players would get pissed off because now you're limiting how the players can interact with dealers. And so uh, this was the casino. And he would, you know, it's interesting because I met him a few times. And of course, me being me, uh, he, I, I, I was literally at a casino on break. And, and this man comes into the break room. He sits down opposite me. And he has just installed this new policy on how to limit tokes. So he would limit the a player's bet to three dollars and he asked me david what do you think and i was like dude it sucks bro <laughs> it's the dumbest thing i've ever every single policy that you have installed here has affected morale everybody wants to leave what do you want from me and you know what he does instead of asking me instead of trying to gain more insight he's like who are you why are you talking to me like this i'm a dealer dude i'm telling you the truth because everyone else he sat down with wasn't wasn't ready to to be honest with him you know what you can fire me because guess what I, I, I've got nothing to lose, dude. Uh, you can fire me all day. It doesn't matter. David never never cared. I, I always had my backstop was, you know, being homeless, you know, when I got out of the army. So there, there's there's nowhere to go, buddy. You know, so, so there's your truth. Live with that and move on. Luckily, COVID uh, eliminated him from the gaming biz. But I will tell you this. If you have an opportunity to get in a casino, follow the boss. If you hear of a legendary management team, go with them. Uh, following a guy like Brian, working on his floor, that's big and that that's always been by the way here in vegas that's that's always been uh, a very good uh, feather in your cap so knowing that you work for a certain boss and you were able to kind of maintain yourself and, and create change and be positive all those things are ridiculously positive what you want to stay away from is all the bs you know if you come across people who are arrogant for arrogance sake or you know you know, it's all about the ego and oh, I'm a casino, but no one gives a shit. Uh, it's all about how you impact the floor and, and the things that you can do to help. And I, I feel like the best boss is like a guy like Brian because he, he looks at it in a very organic way. He wants to create the best experience for the player, give them what they want. They want to play. They want to gamble. They, they want this seamless experience and have happy dealers, happy dealers, happy dealers, happy dealers, because that's the front line. That's who those players are interacting with. And that, that goes true, by the way, for everything. I once knew a hotel manager uh, for the MGM who later became uh, big, 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 big. Uh, he was uh, EVP, MGM, big, big, big. And if you had met him years ago, if you ran into him at the MGM, you'd have no, you would think he was a hotel clerk. No ego, uh, you know, no, no ego. Just completely honest, this most laid back guy. You would run into him and say hello. Um, and, and, and that's how he created, you know, lots of loyalty uh, and, and that's how he ran the hotel. And it was very successful because, you know, that, that's who you want to work with. That's who you want to perform for. Those are the people, you know, th those are the kinds of people that, that create uh, a great experience. Uh, but anyway, so, so follow the boss. Okay. Um, you ready? I'm going to go down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just answer. So ask away. Uh, this is a good time to just turn it over and get some other feedback. And uh, we'll talk about... Uh, Pause at fifteen dollars. Oh, fifteen dollars single zero. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean that that's great, dude. Yeah, I mean the only thing bad about the Plaza is uh, some of their their supervising staff. They don't have a fifteen dollar SR game. If you're gonna sweat the money, dude, you know what I'm saying? Let it go and uh, let people play and enjoy themselves because it's a damn casino. Um, what's your take on higher up security for a casino? I have extensive career experience and skill for my Fed career. Yes, uh, that is a fantastic. By the way, if you're someone that's been vetted and you have gone through and uh, you, you have a, a, you know, a secret, a top secret code clearance, act, that can be very helpful in opening doors uh, because you're someone who can be trusted, who's already been vetted. You might That might lead you to a key license. There's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and if you're interested in surveillance investigations, I would say for you, if you work for the Fed, and you have some background, especially in investigations. Uh, there's some strip properties that pay really well for your skill set. So uh, send me an email. Uh, I did have somebody who was quite literally, you know, special forces, uh, and he was working for a strip property, making a bank as part of this sort of takedown crew. Uh, so some of the casinos have gone to hire hiring uh, these sort of elite special forces group to help monitor uh, their properties. And, and so and try to be as proactive as possible. So to avoid, you know, some other other incidents, you know, a lot of times just old, you know, regular security guards just don't have the, you know, the background, the training, the heads up, they're, they're just sort of there to report, right, their, their whole idea is to kind of call it in, dial it in and let let someone else uh, work that angle. So there are a few properties, Venetian, Wynn, um, and, you know, Aria, they, they have these crews that are made up of 
you know, federal investigators, uh, you know, real well-trained policemen, well-trained uh, military people. Uh, and, and they make great money, by the way. Uh, my friend uh, uh, was making fantastic money uh, doing this. In fact, he, he quit the... Uh, he quit the police force. He, he retired originally to, to work as a, as a policeman. He quit the police force, went to work for the casino uh, and was doing, uh, was doing great. So there is, there is quite a bit of opportunity, especially at the high end places. Uh, they, they've, uh, they've gone to these sort of task forces, their own internal task force to help them sort of monitor, you know, and, and, and manage this whole experience. Uh, so, so there's that. All right. Uh, what pay increase amount would you recommend moving casinos for? So, Two things uh, to move casinos. One is the boss. Like I talked about, following the boss is really critical uh, and understanding what the leadership is. Really good leadership, really good opportunity. So for me, I would, I would choose, if it's a lot of money, um, if it's a lot of money but the boss has sucked, it might not be a lot of money for long, let's just say. Because sometimes casinos will go in, they'll, they'll transfer or convert the leadership, and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you know, the money changes very quickly. If, if you're if you're in a supervisor role and you're on a salaried role or a contracted role, clearly that's different. But if you're in a tip based job, uh, bad management can lead to bad opportunities very, very quickly. Uh, so I recommend that, uh, like, you know, th there's a few casinos now where the management has changed. The money has gone downhill. Just move. Uh, so that that would be my motivation for moving on and, and, you know, kind of helping me get to the next place. I would say, like, in, in terms of tokes as a dealer, you know, it's the $50 and $100 sort of movements that I'm looking for once I get positioned. So if I work, if I, if I end up at a place where I'm making 60, I want to get to the 100 plus envelope next. And by that envelope, I mean tips a day, tips a day. Uh, so if I'm breaking in, I'm at this low end experience, I'm making 50, 60, whatever the case is, my next, my next job should really be north of 100 a day, reliably 100 a day. And again, either, you know, look for the same table game directors. You know, one of the other biggest red flags I have is the casinos that can't figure themselves out, that are constantly cleaning house, you know, where there's always new management, there's new, new everybody, or because they just can't figure out, you know, what's the theme, what the hell am I doing? It happens a lot here in Vegas. You'd be amazed at the shit show that goes on behind the scenes and many times. So, you know, for a lot of time, if you're a high-end player, you see it pretty quickly because the policies will impact the the contract players. You know, a, a lot of times, or how you know hosts interact, or whether there is a host. There, there was a you know one of the big strip casinos. They got rid of all their executive casino hosts and went with all these break-in casino hosts uh, because they wanted to save the money and they wanted to get rid of all the incentivized play. You know, many of these hosts get a little taste, get a little piece, and they were able to eliminate that. Uh, and go with uh, these sort of contracted, uh, uh, you know, card punchers. I mean, it's amazing. And but all, all, you know, right away, you as a player, uh, you know, no matter what level you're at, but especially if you're at a higher level, you you see immediately the change. I was at a casino one time, and uh, I, I happened to be a little higher level player, and I loved going to this casino in the morning because they they served. Uh, you know, really good coffee, and and it was one of the few casinos that served it in a cup, like an actual cup. So many of you, if you come to Vegas, they serve it in this little glass thing, you know, with a napkin on the outside of it, and it, it's just crap. So it was very nice to have like an actual little carafe or cup or whatever it was. And of course, this new this new manager came in. This is a casino manager, and his big change was no more cups, dude. That was his big win. Listen here, we're gonna save money on the cups. There's no more cups. We're gonna go to the little these little stupid ass. And of course, you know, it, it's already a shithole casino with good coffee. Now you got a shithole casino with shithole coffee. I was out. I was done. Uh, so so none of that. Um, but there you go. All right. Now we're looking. Uh, all right. Where do I apply to be the content housemaid? I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's always a need for housemates. Uh, just so you know. Uh, I don't know about the content thing. Uh, yep. Web design. Holy crap. Uh, we, uh, if we, you know, we need web design, but, but we need it on that cheap. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to come to CG in May. When should I register? Okay. We have a couple of things. One is you can register anytime on our website. Uh, you can always buy the courses. It doesn't start until you start. Uh, and then if you decide you want to cancel, we just give your money back. It goes like that. Once you show up though, we got to send uh, the state registration fee. So the relationship changes. We also have a website called dealers.school, uh, that we are slowly rolling out it, it's it's much more technical we're, we're we're wanting to make this as formative as possible so we're spending a lot of time making sure that it works 
and all the moving parts are in. I know, I know quite a few of you had submitted the form. Um, some of you we haven't really gotten back to because we're trying to kind of limit the, the scope of, of people that are on the platform, at least right now while we work out a few things. Most of the, the, the Blackjack course is up there in its entirety. So if you're interested in just learning Blackjack uh, as a dealer, um, and right now it, it, it's on sale, so you'll get it. Uh, it's going to be 150 bucks, but it's 99 bucks. So, but eventually we'll have all the courses. We're, we're going to integrate all the casinos that we work with, so there'll be this sort of this hiring network that'll be built into that, um, and then we'll be you know expanding uh, that role. Yeah, if you have top secret clearance, that's fantastic. There are definitely casinos uh, that that look at that as a background. Any casinos you were glad to see sold? Um, yeah, 100. Uh, percent So. Um, Let's see. Uh, I was interested when originally the 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 strat. Uh, so when Carl Icahn comes in, takes over a property, I, I I think that um, he's in like sort of holding pattern. I, I'm not sure there's there's a lot of things that are done proactively to help that those casinos because he's just there to kind of uh, you know you milk the opportunity, take advantage of you when you're down. Then he buys it low, and he's kind of this min maxer. So anytime a new company, actual gaming company, comes in, takes over property, um, I'm I'm very excited about that. I am excited that uh, the Tropicana now is going to finally be purchased, uh, or well, is finally purchased and is going through this sort of hopefully some of this renaissance thing that will take shape. I was originally excited that the Rio finally got bought off from under Caesars. Dreamscape came in, and everybody's kind of sitting back waiting for. You know, they keep talking about this big investment they're making, or they will be making, and and so far, you know, uh, none of that has been uh, materialized. But over the years, there's there's been sort of this consolidation of Vegas, and then this non-consolidation of Vegas, um, and you know, it, it's it's kind of hit or miss. You know, when the Palms was was converted, it's now it's now owned by us. I mean, I was really hoping that that would be a better experience. So far. I haven't even been in there to be honest with you. You know, most of the people that I know have interacted with the Palms hasn't been necessarily the best thing. So I'm kind of waiting. The verdict is still out on that one. Virgin, I was very excited that Virgin took over, but it's just a hotel. It's Mohegan Sun runs a casino, and um, you know you can light a cannon in that place. It's, I mean, that, there's there's a great example of uh, like what the hell? Like how is that? A, how is that a thing? I, I I'm I'm just stunned sometimes how how. A, a property can go from just, you know, you guys back in the day that, you know, it was originally the Hard Rock and it was a fantastic property. Anyone that says that you can't make a property off strip work, it's BS because that property used to be one of the biggest destinations in Vegas. It, it was it was an incredible uh, a place. You can, movie stars constantly. They had that MTV show Rehab that was uh, filmed there. Uh, it, you know, it was a fantastic place. And then, then you had a, ca a casino come in and just whack it. I mean, literally kill it uh, and took away all the character, all the things that made it very special. And so, yeah, it doesn't get a lot of chop. You can literally go there right now. We were there, me, Alex, and Dennis, and a few of us, we were there on a Thursday at 6.30, zero players. There were, there were like four games, zero players. So it's kind of sad to see those types of things. Uh, and uh, there's that. All right. Um, any other any other casinos I was... I was uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, Vegas evolves. I, I um, you know, one of the one of the interesting conversations, I know that you guys, some of you that follow Patreon, you've kind of followed my arc. And, uh, you know, what does David know? You know, I've just been sitting in the background most of my life uh, and, and kind of waiting. Now, of course, that we built Casino Quest, that we have the dealer school, there, there's more people that are interested in, in kind of what we have to say, um, you know, that are, that are kind of listening, but still no, no one takes it all that seriously. I'm just amazed that, you know, casinos now there, you know, I really wish we would get back to five dollar games uh, because I, I think that's the way the way forward. I, I don't think, quite honestly, that these uh, 15, 25, 50 dollar games because people are going to get tired. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to play. It doesn't matter. Inflation, all I say, but you, you can't create working systems. You, you want to promote engagement with the tables. And, and people that are really coming out to gambling. You, you, for, so YouTube is doing a great job is expanding the player base. It's, it's, it's fantastic. The number of people that know how to play craps now is, is, is through the roof. There's so many wonderful craps channels and, and people teaching craps. Uh, and, and this is a great opportunity for casinos to really lean into that and, and see people and build relationships. And, you know, the only casino that's doing that is Elvis Island. It's literally Elvis Island. And, and, and uh, you know, one of the Ellis sisters, she told me directly, 
It's a culture. It has nothing to do about the money because it's not the money. They could easily just do 10 and $15 all day long. It's about the culture. People look for that. And there's many of you that know when you come to Vegas and you want to play a system and you want to engage in the game, you go to Ellis. And you don't go, just go to Ellis because it's a $5 game. You go to Ellis because the dealers are better. They're friendlier. They're motivated to work with you. You know, they're, they're creating this space, right? They're creating this entire environment that is conducive. And, and, and people will remember that. You know, people know that. People will lean into that over time. And I definitely think that, um, you know, that that has to be that has to be looked at. You know, what's strange is that Vegas is going the other way, at least for the moment. Uh, it looks like, you know, higher limit tables. Um, you know, the, this whole Formula One thing makes me a, kind of a bit nervous as well. You're going to be getting a lot more. It, it just changes the dynamic. I, I really think there should be a space here for people that want to play. Uh, and people that want to come and, and really experience what, what Vegas was intended to be. I, I get all the foofy food and, and I, I get all the expensive stuff. So so leave that, right? Like like kind of switch a little bit. You know, it used to be that the food was free uh, and, and to get people gambling on the floor. Uh, you know, now the food could be ridiculously expensive and a destination to get, you know what I mean? And then on their way, they're spending a couple of dollars uh, playing the table games. I don't know. I, I, I really think that uh, that's why me and, and Alex, one of these days, hopefully, you know, maybe we'll have our own casino and we'll be able to promote that kind of the old school uh, thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I, 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 quite un, I quite honestly don't understand uh, the philosophy behind uh, $100 games. Uh and uh, I, I know we, we can sit here and tear it apart, and I, 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 I bet that any casino will say, well, listen, all we need is one player. Yeah, but, 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 but that's not really a thing because it's one player in a moment in time. It's not one player over the course of the history of this table. Can you imagine how many people missed out on an opportunity to play your game because they saw that it was $100 or $50? So if you look at it over a period of time, uh, over the course of time, that, that, that I, I guarantee that table had, had more opportunity that, that, was, that was just not seen or, or, or lost. You know, okay, so we don't need to have a $3, a dollar game, but oh my God, a $5 game, dude. Uh, seems like, uh, you know, seems like, you know, that's the thing, downtown now, they're following the whole circa. They're following, you know, they're, they're getting their own bougie thing uh, going up. You know, it used to be that that was the thing. You went downtown and you found your discounted meals, the discounted tables, and now they're all $15, $25. It's amazing. They feel like they, they have you trapped, so then what are you going to do? So so what do you do? You keep your money in your wallet, and you just move on. You go back to playing uh, playing Kino. Yeah, I, I will say, like, the F1, man, it's amazing because they, they are now charging the county $40 million for the road improvements. So they're, they're sort of demonstrating they spent $80 million. That was just recently in the news. They talked about, uh, and they're looking for the county to kind of reimburse half that because Formula One has sort of upgraded, you know, the road infrastructure. But... It it I I'm so stunned that that I and I I and there's no takeaway. If you're a fan of Formula One, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not judge of that. I I, I love the, I love fast cars and all that stuff too. But I I just like over the last six months, it's been such an intrusion in literally everyone's life here in Vegas. And so because there's so much construction going on in so many places throughout the entire strip, and it's not just the the Formula One. So the, if you don't know already, the Las Vegas Strip is being converted into a track. Uh, for this Formula One over the course of so November 16th, 17th, and 18th, right? So they've they've gone ahead and and you know there's just been the, the whole strip has just been shut down to one lane many times, sometimes no lanes. Uh, and and what it's done is it's forced. So if you you know the strip is responsible for a lot of people working here in town, like a lot of people work on the strip. I mean a lot of people, and so you know in order to get to work it, it literally takes hours in some cases also the MSG sphere has been built and now you and now the whole NASCAR formula 1 uh you know the the whole station that they have there is being done and then they're putting up all these barricades so like this entire area not just the strip itself but but like three roads out and then it's been pushing all of this traffic to all the other areas and creating so much intrusion uh, here in Vegas, it's been really, really difficult for most of us. And we, you know, we're putting up with it because, you know, everyone's talking about the impact of Formula One is, is going to have. And, you know, the, the impact it's going to have is uh, a lot of rich people are going to be here paying a lot of flipping money, you know, to see uh, see these cars roll around the world. And I really hope they, they fill up those $50 tables. But let's do this. Once they fill and, you know, those tables are going to be 100 bucks. It's not even going to be 50 If you're here that weekend, which... Congratulations! You know you paid the fifteen hundred a day to come see your come see, but uh, 
Let's let's go. Now you made all that money. That economic impact that everyone's waiting for has happened. Let's go back to five dollar tables for everybody else. Formula One is done. Now let's just bring in the crowds and let people start coming and 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 coming to experience. I don't know. I'm gonna be sharing that for the rest of my my days. I really feel like that's that's a missing long term. Uh, I know that there's there's quite a few people who will will stay ahead of this and and you know sort of evolve the experience as we go and we'll keep you abreast. Uh, if there's one thing, me and Alex go where we're wanted. Uh, we don't intrude on anybody's space or anybody's casino. Not every casino wants us. That's the thing. Uh, but uh, but but the casinos that we know that welcome us and and kind of respect what we do and uh, have a relationship with us. You know, we're there. We're gonna play there. We're gonna have fun. Okay. Uh, yeah. Here's one. People sell their soul for signing out. That is very true. Okay. Yeah, the Cortez. Can you believe the El Cortez downtown bird game? Now fifteen dollar tables on the weekend. It's unbelievable. I, I I just don't know how they happen. Okay. Uh, I got a few more questions, and I'm probably gonna call it a day. Uh, oh yeah, but here, all right. So here, ready? Uh, a few more questions. Okay. Ellis is a good experience. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. Why are only the high limit box tables like so? So the high limit box tables is what's called midi boc, uh, and that's literally part of the experience. And they just keep that for people who are willing to pay. And and yes, they they go through one deck of cards. Those decks, by the way, aren't all that expensive. So, I mean, technically, I, I think it's more about the movement of the game, the fact that you're playing more. The game moves a lot slower when you touch the cards. There's lots of nuance to those tables, by the way, too. So people that are playing at high limits and they touch the cards. There's there's lots of nuance in that experience between the casino and the player, and so it, it's a much slower game. So they're not prepared to have that for you know lower end uh, tables that have to move quicker so they can make their money that kind of thing. So you won't you won't see midi bock available you know at the low end pretty much ever. That's just never a thing. Um, yeah, so like you know, and and that's exactly right. So Ian Levy says uh, you know they they were willing to lose a thousand bucks. Uh, you know, but not if they're only going to get to play an hour. And that's exactly right. Uh, you guys come with real money, but but if, if it can't work for you, I mean, if you get smart about it, uh, and, and I think there, I think some casinos just expect you to lose your mind, like just forget the fact that there's odds and there's strategy. They just want you to plunk your money down and pray. And ultimately, you know, that's a win for them. That's why they teach you combat systems, right? That's why you come and see David. They teach you combat systems. The, the flat bet doesn't make you money. Get away from the flat bet. Learn how to play dice. So I know, uh, you know, I can have this conversation all day long. Next week, we're going to be at this restaurant, and then we're going to have this regular sort of crapsy episode. We're going to talk about craps a lot more. But, but you know, listen, once you learn how to play, you realize that you just plunking money on a table is not an opportunity. That There's no opportunity. That that's, you know, if you come to grind the game, there's ways to grind the game. Grind the game, play, get your cocktail, and move on. But if you're talking about opportunity, don't play the come. Learn all the strategies. Don't play the come. Don't play the pass line. Don't play odds. That's not the opportunity. Place bets pay better. They create more opportunity. They allow you to build your bank and put money in the rack. Everything else is is silliness. Uh, it, it, it is it is what it is. There's lots of systems out there. Don't get me wrong. And I'm very excited that you guys are all learning them and learning how to play and being a part of that. But uh, that flat bet, that even money bet that you put on a game, that, that doesn't pay you. That's not gambling. That's just you hanging out at the casino uh so yeah so i would i would really love them to uh casinos to start really paying attention to how people spend look a thousand bucks casino lost down a thousand dollars because if you know something about a game and and you have to pay it even 25 50 whatever the case is even a thousand dollars doesn't give you a lot of opportunity one hour you know what i mean you know not a, not a thing uh okay you ready? Uh, I got a few more. Okay, they want to charge the county for the yeah, I know, and they want to charge the county for the roads. I know. They're, so they're you know, Formula One is giving the county a forty million dollar bill, and the county's like, suck it, we're not playing forty million, but they're gonna work out a deal. I can only imagine the deal. Can you imagine they come, they come, and they're like, you know what? We've improved your roads, uh, and then sort of after the fact, and here is what we would like you to contribute because we've made this investment. You know what I mean? We they already made the investment. They got up on the cheap. Uh, okay, here's one. I hate Downtown Grand, but they have $5 tables. Yeah, I know. We haven't had the greatest laser. By the way, Downtown Grand is, has under new management, so to speak. Uh, so, so not no real hate there. And, 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 and honestly, that whole experience was, was really narrowed down. There were two people that were responsible for moving our fan base out. So, you know, as far as everybody else, the dealers that are there and everybody else involved in that casino, there, there's, there's really no hate. In fact, we, we took down our video. 
where we were talking about the downtown grant. Uh, you know, it, th there's, by the way, that's a great example when I was talking about you follow the boss. They, they used to have this woman who was a ship boss there. Fantastic. This lady was so engaged with players and dealers that that used to be a sleeper job. If you worked at the downtown Grand, it, it was a good job uh, because she pulled players in. People came to that casino because she was there creating this very fun, very engaging experience. Of course, then they got rid of her. And we're not sure why or she left or whatever the case is. And it became the hole that it became. And now they they got dollar tables on two dollar tables. But when we show up with a bunch of people, even with an agreement for, for ten dollar games, five and ten dollar games, they raised it to twenty five dollars. Can you imagine? And we're like, oof, that's not going to work out for us. Uh Allowing players using, oh yeah, how do you feel about casinos like the D, allowing players to buy in on a table games using a debit card, 100% a slippery slope. I, I hate that, to be honest with you. I really don't like that at all. I, I feel like that's a setup for absolute disaster. I can tell you this, me personally, it's tough for me to get up from a game that I'm chasing. If I start to chase, me getting up from that game is just this, I my ass is literally glued to the seat. It's so hard for me. Even a Kino machine sometimes, it's really difficult. And the debit, if I had my debit card there with me, oh God, that's terrible, dude. I I would have to drain the money and make sure that they don't let me go over and, and just have, I mean, it was just it just complicates things. I really, I really hate that, that this is being introduced. I don't like this as a feature at all. I think for many people, it just sets us up for failure. And th that's, that's one of those areas that I feel is it's not a gray area. The casinos know that this is this is come on, this is human nature. People are gonna sit there. They're gonna have a debit card. There, there was a there was a casino not too long ago that let you put a debit card into a flipping slot machine. They took it out right away. They realized that this was not a thing, you know, because people put their slot. Imagine that you just play off your bank. Screw it. You don't even buy in, dude. You just give them. Here's my ATM card. Here's my pin. Let's go. And uh, that that's not good. And they know it's not good. Come on now. You, you know it's not good. That's not good. You can't have people. People there. there for many of us, for, for a lot of people uh, with some self-control, they would just put it in and play what they want. But for a few people, that's going to be a really, really, really bad hole. And so you just, you just having that feature and then right next to it, having the brochure of how to get help for gambling, that's not a fix, okay? Let, let's get the debit card thing out the dope. You know what I mean? Now, I do. I'm okay if they have like, you know, more tech and you put money in the cage and then they can set up a marker and, and you can connect with the cage real quickly. Those kinds of things. I agree with that. But if anybody's out there saying that somehow the debit card thing, uh, and I know bosses are like, hey, our win is up, our play is up. Yeah, yeah, because, it, but there's also evictions are up. Uh, there, there's some, some kids are not going to college is up. You know what I mean? Like that, that's a thing. So, so I know that, um, I know that they, they're seeing that as, as a win. It's, it's no win, dude. That, that's where people should come first. Uh, but, but there's that. Are we getting a video of Alex playing at the plaza from last night? That? I don't know. Uh, just had a great opportunity at the Sahara. Had place bets up to 300 and a couple numbers and no combats. Fantastic, sir. Get the hell away from the combats. Or come see me and I'll explain why. No combats. Uh, three dice. Uh, there's a so someone has a local casino with three dice in their bubble crap shaker. That's interesting. One of them is black. I don't know. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. I what I want is if any of you are in Washington State and you happen to be by that crap table where people sit and throw dice, I want to see a picture of that. I really do. I'd love to see what that is. I met someone not too long ago. There there's a table, uh, and, and it's true where everybody sits. Everybody sits and you lean in on the side, you throw the dice. I think that's fantastic. I, I would love to just literally go drive up there and go play at that. That casino, those are kind of, see that I love, that I love. Um, okay, any chance of you guys making a dinner plate size placemat of a roulette layout? I would love to get the full size one you have, but my wife won't let me. Uh, you know what, that, that that might be cool actually. That's actually, I think that'd be a great, imagine that having the roulette one under your plates. And as you like uh, moved on to dessert, you could just sit there and work on some numbers, maybe a little wheel, all this other thing. Um, no, uh, are you familiar with the mandatory blackjack side bet at the Golden Nugget? No, and I think that's absurd too. If that's a thing, uh, I do know of a I do know of a casino that I that I went to that had a a side bet that wasn't mandatory, but it was included in your bet, uh, and so it was a progressive thing, and it was a way, new way to look at the game, I guess, and not not the worst thing. Obviously, they took some winning away from, or they you know, the, anytime they give you something, they have to either take away. 
uh, or, or the game changes. If you guys ever step up to a slot machine uh, and, and you get paid for zero, walk away uh, because that's not, that's, not, that's not gambling either. That's just, they just want to see you in the seat. Those, the theoreticals on those machines are higher. The paybacks are lower. Uh, so they, they do that with Kino. They, they, you know, and then so if you get zero numbers, you get your money back, which sounds like, oh, my God, how fantastic. Let me just sit here and just get my money back. But that, that's not winning. That's not even gambling. I mean, that, that's, that's just you, your ass in your seat and grinding time. Uh, that, that's, that's not a thing. I, I hate games like that because they're, they're, they're scary, deceptive. We went to Hard Rock Tampa, and I have a picture of their payback on a $5 machine. And, you know, here's a, here's a great example of absolute nonsense. And I, don't, I, don't, I really don't care. Uh, I probably never work for Hard Rock ever. Uh, as much as I love the old Hard Rock, uh, you know, that was here in Vegas. But see, the, there's a casino that is a monopoly. They basically own all the casinos, and, and they just they just dish out whatever they think they can get away with, right? Uh, that, that's terrible. That, that, that's terrible. You know, why not have a competitive? So someone like me comes, and I'm looking at the paybacks and trying to compare them to Vegas. I, I don't expect them to be on par with Vegas. I, I get it. You're on your own little community. That's why... That's why some of the Indian casinos, and no, no, okay, now this is a takeaway. There are some Indian casinos that have great paybacks uh, and, and do, do really great. They, they look for ways to optimize the experience, there's no doubt. I lived in Arizona. There was one Indian casino I played at a lot, and it had the best paybacks, and, and they were better than the other casino by miles. It was unbelievable. Like, it, does nobody pull up the, you know, to see what the pace, what it pays? Because you should. You should. When you sit down at a machine, a video poker, a keno machine, sometimes slots it's hard to figure out, but you should get an idea of what you're, how much you're going to get back. You just hit in the button. I mean, and that's what they hope. That, that, that goes true with table games. They want you to just step up, uh, bring your money, put your debit card in apparently, and just let it go. You know, triple zero roulette, quadruple tri zero, triple zero roulette with three side bets. So, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Crap tables. When you walk up to a crap table and you go to, you go to learn the lesson at the casino, they're going to teach you come bets. They're going to teach you come bets. They're going to teach you a pass line and two come bets because that's what the math says that you should do. And they're going to convince you that somehow the odds are true odds and we don't make any money off the odds and how wonderful – right away you should know that they're feeding you a line of BS. Yes, the odds are true odds on their own. Uh, but, but they're, you know, casino's not going to chain you on how to be the best player. That's just a thing. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so here you go. And you create this environment where you're completely trying to, uh, you know, and, and there's a bean counter back there, dude. There's a bean counter back there. And he's working on the math and saying, how do we squeeze out the, the theoreticals? You know what's interesting? There is a slot guy right now. Uh, I, I know him personally now. He's, he's at Ellis. He's, the, he's literally the slot director at Ellis. He used to work at the El Cortez. And the El Cortez used to have – I'm not sure what they're doing now, but they used to advertise they had the highest paybacks in town. And you know what that means? That doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to be winning the most money, but it does let you sit in your chair and enjoy the experience longer. And for many of us, that's a win. You come to Vegas and you can hang out and play – that, that's a win, right? That's that's what we're looking for. We want to just hang out. You want to bring $1,000 up to a crap table and get maybe three, four hours of enjoyment or, you know, whatever. You want to bring 200 and find a table again where you can play and have a good time, have a few beers, have a few laughs. And if you're out in 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Now you've had a terrible experience and guess what? You're not coming back. So the interesting thing about the El Cortez and they, they have, they, there's an actual study out there that shows that higher paybacks and, and you guys know this. If you go to a casino, the places that you know you win, you come back to. As simple as that. And and part of the reason is they have better paybacks because if you're going – every time you're going out the casino, if you're getting whacked, you're just not going there. This is not That's not fun. That's, that's not an experience. And if every time you're going, you have to – maximize you know every little detail like you getting a hot dog is ten dollars you getting a drink is ten dollars you know the, the, that whole thing it just it just bears on the brain dude uh and it, it, it's amazing that i there's so much opportunity i really hope i really hope uh that a casino comes and at someday they open a floor and it goes completely organic there, there's a lot of bosses out there who feel like if, if you open an old school classic casino with classic table games and classic odds and, and, and you know, everything just old school that you can't make any money. Uh, I, I don't understand. How is that true? These casinos have existed for 50, 60 years 
and and you know we, we've just evolved. I, I think you just have to try to change the margin a little bit. You have to just create a separate experience, you know. And uh, I and I think that if if you create this this entire organic floor, uh, there's a lot of money to be made. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe you don't have this you know high end restaurant because maybe that's not maybe that's not your client base, or maybe you don't have like the nicest of ever, you know what I mean? There, there's lots of ways to create this experience and, and, and make it very positive without having to grind every dollar, uh, you know, out of the experience either. All right. Yeah. Triple zero, man. It's amazing. Do you know that I, we have one of our bosses is literally, you know, there, there's experiences where people look for triple zero. I kid you not. People literally come on the floor and for whatever reason, they had the most fun playing triple zero. And there are people out there that feel like they're getting robbed if there's not more zeros. <laughs> like there's here, there's more places to bet and win on the table. Is that just stunning to me? Absolutely stunning. And you know, there's enough of those out there for us all to enjoy. That's just fantastic. That's not art. That's not necessarily our thing, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, the dealer for weeks. So, uh, okay, ready? Here, I, I'm going to give you guys uh, uh, some good thing because now I'm all warmed up, ready to go. I started out a little sicky, uh, so uh, it's been a little tough. All right, I'm going to scroll this back. Uh, combat is the best bet as cattle if you max odds. Well, if you have a 10 times, 20 times odds, it's not the worst thing, but uh, I would love to have that discussion, dude. I would love to show you guys how the money moves and uh, you know, from, from a dealer perspective, just from any game. I, I, I will show you. I, I can show it to you on a table. One of these days, I'll just have to focus on that and and get it up okay uh all right so uh so here's here's a couple of things that are interesting for us so we're our school is expanding we're moving the school here in a minute uh to a much bigger location and we're going to be adding a new dynamic to the school so for people that are interested in just getting a taste of what it's like to be a casino dealer we are going to be offering these uh a program so there are going to be two two programs at first one of them is going to be a two-day it's going to be a three day, maybe a two day thing where you're going to come to the school. You're basically just going to focus on blackjack, maybe even a little bit of dice because dice is tough uh, for one day from the dealer perspective. But um, you'll be able to come to the school, learn for a day or two, and then go to Casino Quest and be a Las Vegas dealer and be certified as a Las Vegas, at least for a day. It'll be a fun thing to have, a little trophy of your experience. But if it's always been on your bucket list and you're not prepared to leave your, you know, your stock market job or your teaching, whatever it is, this we hope this will be a fun way for you to, you know, be part of our school and then and then deal to, you know, the players at Casino Quest. Now, yes, you know, you're not going to be on a licensed casino floor because Casino Quest education space, but you will get a feel. Uh, you know, for you know the engagement, you're gonna you're gonna be dealing the cards and talking to players and and discussing strategies. So so it is part of the experience. I mean, it's it's a very visceral experience, and maybe it'll help some of you if if you're thinking about being a dealer, give you kind of a heads up. Maybe you know you got some back issues. Can you can you stand up and and deal for a whole hour? Uh, that's kind of thing. And uh, yeah, all right. So um. Here's a, here's a little bit of the cat out of the bag. So you know, Casino Quest is is uh, fairly successful now. Uh, you know, after all these years, uh, we're getting enough appointments. We've been expanding our staff, and we're creating this new experience that we're rolling out here uh, in about six months' time. Uh, with that, we have a few things. We're opening up our learning management platform at dealers.school, and then we'll have this sort of common experience that we hope to have other experiences uh, opening in in other states. So we've we're talking with this very big uh, property uh, that we have a relationship with, and we're evolving this uh, plan. Uh, the first part is to build it where we're at right now in a, in a much more uh, high traffic area. So, so where we are, the, the store that we're at now, Casino Quest, uh, we get about 1,200 new uh, reservations or 1,200 new people a month, uh, minus retail. Those are 1,200 reservations, give or take. Uh, that includes groups. We do a lot of team building. We've worked with a lot of companies. Uh, we do a lot of really cool uh, events there, and that we've done some productions. We did this uh, music video for uh, uh, some Mexican pop stars. That's kind of thing. So we've we've done a lot of that because uh, it's a cool space. It's like a virtual casino, and uh, so so between the corporate stuff and the individuals, about twelve hundred people come to that, and we're literally in kind of the nosebleed section uh, of the mall. So we're at the back end of the mall by Dillard's. It's as far away from the strip as you could possibly be. So we're going to be moving more center, more center, more people, this kind of thing. And we're hoping 
that we're able to create this whole new experience uh, where you'll be able to just kind of, we'll have more people that just come by, interact with us and be part of this experience and, and start with us on this journey. Uh, and then if it works, and it, if it works, we'll know pretty quickly if it works. So we're, we're gonna do this sort of test. It's gonna be kind of a pop-up thing at first. So it's gonna be three to six months. We're leaning more towards three months. And if it works, we're going to be opening a few more locations. We have an idea of where we're gonna opening next. We don't wanna share that quite yet, but uh, it's already sort of been planned out, that kind of thing, because we, we know what the footprint is and, and how that engagement. And then, you know, you as players will be able to come down, or if you're interested in this as a career, you'll be able to come down to a local casino quest, or especially in these areas, and engage with us there, you know, starting there. And if you wanna to come to Vegas and you wanna continue on that path, you'll come here, and we do have a few hotels, we do have a few casinos uh, that are interested in interact with us. We even have a slot company uh, who is looking to get some user feedback and, and roll out some of their slot software. So we hope to have this as like a kind of really complete experience where you guys will be able to test new slot machines. You know what I mean? We're an education space, right? Uh, and, and, you know, you can vote on whether you like certain games or, you know, whatever it is, slot machines, new Kino machines, that kind of thing. You could also vote on whether you like new tables. So there's a lot of table game developers, which, by the way, really tough market. For those of you guys thinking to have a new game, uh, I would say don't do it. Uh, it's really, really tough. It requires a lot of flipping money. It's very hard to break into the table game space or introduce a new table game. So... Uh, you know, kind of avoid that. But anyway, so that's that's the kind of the expansion plans. We've had to pivot a little bit. We're a bit short on staff. Uh, we, 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 we bootstrapped this entire business. And uh, one of the things uh, here, I'll give you guys a quick business lesson for you guys that are that are or not business lesson, but but I'll give you kind of uh, an update for those of you who are still here. So me and Alex, uh, a couple of years, you know, we were dealers. We were dealers. Uh, we had some great ideas. We've sort of evolved the business, and we've done a pretty we've done it pretty successfully. And we're at this point now where we have very little debt. We have almost no debt. Amazingly, like we we have the twenty one uh, full time employees, and we're, we're generating a, a, you know a good deal of revenue. Everybody, you know, we start all our people at a living wage, and we have we have some people, you know, at quite a few different levels. Uh, and uh, now we're sort of trying to get to this next uh, this next stage. So, which is going to require some money. And quite honestly, we're not really sure how we're going to go about the money. We don't. We're we're not really all that interested in selling any equity because we know that we're about to pivot and and create this new this new opportunity. So we're trying to bootstrap it. We're trying to just work with the cash that we have without without creating any more debt and kind of move forward. Uh, but you know, it's it's a uh, it's a lot. It's it, it's definitely a lot. It's creating uh, for us at least. This is that stage where uh, we we quite honestly never thought we would be here. Uh, we, um, you know, those of you that have followed us, uh, we, you know, we started very, very small. Uh, we started in 850 square feet uh, with about 10 to 20 students a month. Uh, and we were, you know, happy. Uh, you know, we didn't make a lot of money. Uh, you know, we, I, I, I drove a Chrysler, old Chrysler 200 and lived in a thousand square foot condo. And uh, I was still happy. I was happy. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I enjoyed, you know, being a dealer. I worked part time as a dealer, and then I would work at the school a little bit. Uh, but we started from a very small space, and, and now we're in this new space. Uh, we're very new. I'm, I'm broadcasting to this from uh, our collab house that we share uh, because we we're running out of time, and uh, we needed a place. So we, we have most of our media team, most of our key people, kind of live here. Uh, and, you know, it's this five thousand square foot house. Uh, and, and we got this so because it has in front of me, you can't really see it, but on the other side of me is this whole media space so we can keep everything set up and we can film everything. Uh, and it's taken a lot of pressure off because it's a lot of pressure. Me, me and Alex don't don't take a lot of days off. Uh, our days are very long. It's been a bit bit of a, a bit of exhausting. You know, we, we thought about Kickstarter and uh, we, we've thought of a few things on, on how to to get, uh, you know, kind of our fan base involved. And I think I think it's 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 such a we, we have this production company by the way coming uh, very uh, another production company they're coming out in November to film. Uh, it, it it's really been an amazing thing, dude. You got I wish you guys could be here. I wish you guys could have been on this with us. Uh, and and I know many of you have been, and um, it, it, it's just stunning. I, I I bounced a check three months uh, three years ago. I literally bounced a check. We had, we had sixty four dollar check something like this. Bounced it. I I didn't do it on purpose, <laughs> uh, but you know. We were out of business, and, and and here we are having this whole new relationship, and uh, you know, creating this entirely new experience, 
Uh, and uh, we're just we're just really loving it, man. And 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 I know that um, I really enjoy that you guys have been on this with us. Uh, you 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 have no idea. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, super chats. Yeah, to shave your head. Yeah, we used to collect some super chats for uh, shaving. I, I know you guys paid me. I think six hundred dollars to shave my mustache that one time. No, I think that's a, and now look at you now, buddy. Yeah, it's quite something, dude. That really the shirt really makes sense. Can you imagine? Anyways, all right. So there's that. Any last minute questions? I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Thank you guys so much. And um, hopefully this was a uh, somewhat informative. One of these days, I'll just do like the business chat and uh, get into the nitty gritty. I don't mind sharing. I really don't. I could care less. I would love for you guys to know how we've done it. I, I one of these days, I want someone to come to me and talk about you know th their own thing. You know the thing that that maybe you know I help them realize. You know I'm I'm. It took me a long time to settle in. You know, it wasn't until 50 years old that uh, I, you know, I basically started the life. I, I started having confidence. I started seeking truth. I started surrounding myself with people who were, who wanted to be, who are hungry, energetic, want to be part of that experience. And um, yeah, I, I love, I love sharing that. I love, uh, you know, I, I, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Uh, I know that the, you know the thing is about following your dreams. I I don't always know it's about the dream because sometimes some people's dreams are unrealistic. Uh, I think it's more about truth, uh, understanding what we're looking for. Everyone's looking for a different kind of freedom uh, and a different kind of you know a different kind of engagement uh, as as human beings. And and uh, and I I think that that's the pursuit. I think the thing that makes you happy, the thing that gives you passion and the belief in yourself and the confidence in you. I think those are the things that that are that you you know you should put forward. We can't all be astronauts if that's the dream. But uh, I th I think truth and understanding you know your truth and and my truth took me a long time uh, to sit down and and really come to uh, understanding with that. But anyways, off the keynote to unwind. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.